Okay, so in this video, we'll talk about the need for machine learning. Do we really need machine learning? And uh, you know, if so, what are the applications? Why do we care about machine learning really? Right? So, well, necessity is the mother of all invention. So essentially, if machine learning is so popular, there must be some applications that really, really, really need machine learning. Okay? So ability to mimic humans and automate certain monotonous tasks is the thing that actually led to the, to the, to the rise of machine learning. Okay? So for example, one of those tasks is recognizing handwritten characters. Okay? So this is a snapshot of a popular data set called as the MNIST numbers data set. Right? So these are handwritten digits and the idea is you need to write or rather uh, write machine learning code or be able to design a machine learning model such that it can actually automatically identify uh, whether the number is 5 or 6 or 7 and so on. Okay. Now, of course, this has lots of applications uh, all across various sectors. For example, when you're filling insurance forms, maybe uh, you know a handwritten text um, that needs to be read by automated mechanisms so that it can be processed by downstream systems and so on. Okay. So similarly, when you write checks, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, in the bank, there is some guy who actually tries to match the number with what you have written in words. Match the number with what you have written in words. Okay. Now, can this be automated, right? So this can be automated if you can actually recognize digits or you can actually recognize any kind of handwriting, like characters themselves. Right. So that's one application. But there are so many other applications. For example, um, you know, uh, from the supermarkets, you can actually get a whole bunch of transactional data. Uh, where a transaction, uh, where every transaction refers to the real bill that you get, uh, that a customer gets when they buy something from from the supermarkets, like Walmart or More Store or Vijeta or any of those popular supermarkets. Right. So um, the idea is uh, uh, to discover new knowledge from these large databases. So once you have these transactional databases, can you discover some new knowledge from them? Okay. Now this is where uh, data mining, which is more or less very related to machine learning, is very useful. Okay. So um, what you could analyze is these things that were bought together and try to understand which things were frequently co-bought. Okay. And um, if they're frequently co-bought, there must be, this is a very important pattern which could be used to come up with better store layout designs for, uh, for designing discount bundles or for cross-selling products when you want, when somebody, when, you know, when a customer buys product X, can you recommend product Y and so on based on frequently co-bought patterns. Okay, so that's yet another application of machine learning. So in fact, machine learning is also necessary for developing systems that can automatically adapt and customize themselves to individual users. Okay, so in fact, such systems are called personalization-based systems. Now, these systems could include personalized search, personalized recommendation systems that you see here, or even personalized ads. Okay, so, so these are recommendations on a job portal, recommendations on Amazon, recommendations on Netflix about movies, right? Jobs, uh, products, movies, right? So recommended in a very personalized way based on your history or based on other users which are similar to you, what did they buy and so on. All that requires machine learning, right? So machine learning is of course also useful for machine translation. So, you know, uh, coming up with, uh, with, uh, with documents of this form and then automatically translating them to other languages. Of course, this helps not just for uh, 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 not just for, for, for official document purposes, but it's also helpful for tourists when they are visiting different countries and they want to figure out what's going on right, in a new country where they don't understand the actual language. Right. So recently people have started using machine learning in, in uh, uh, novel ways, in a very new way. Right? For example, given an image producing a sentence to describe its contents, also called as image captioning. Okay? For example, here you want to be able to say the dog is hiding. Okay? So in, people have been using machine learning to do tasks of that kind as well. Okay? So a very simple and a concrete example of how machine learning can be done is the spam classifier that sits in all of our inboxes, right? So if you use Gmail or you use any other email provider, you know, all of those email providers, they have a module called as spam classifier. Whenever an email comes in to your, to your email address, the spam classifier runs on that email, tries to figure out whether it is spam or normal or a useful email, okay? If it is spam, it really puts it in the spam folder or the junk folder as you may call it, okay? So what is spam? Well, all emails that a user does not want to receive or has not asked to be delivered, right, to receive, okay? So the problem is to identify spam emails and uh, what machine learning models do is to really use, uh, you know, some reasonable amount of training data, uh, also called as labeled training data, right, and be able to learn this classifier such that uh, uh, the classifier accurately predicts whether this email is spam or not, okay? So the accuracy of the classifier is in fact measured in terms of percent of filtered spam emails and percent of non-spam emails that were incorrectly filtered out. 
Okay. So machine learning classifiers do need, or machine learning, most of the supervised machine learning models do need data, a database of emails that were actually labeled by users. So maybe you need like 1,000 emails which were not spam and 1,000 emails which were spam labeled uh, so that this machine learning classifier can do um, a case-based learning and therefore come up with this nice model. Okay. So in fact, machine learning revolution is, uh, uh, is, is uh, you know, um, uh, has been around in stages. So in fact, in 1960s, work on machine translation already started. Okay. So promise of machine translation failed to move beyond basic machine translation. Uh, it was too expensive and failed to deliver on its promise. Uh, at that point, it was too expensive. You did not have enough labeled data and so on. Okay. So you know, over time, this this field has grown, right, and evolved. And now, you know, there is in 2010s, the, the field has grown uh, so much that now it is known as deep learning, a specific part of machine learning, which uh, uh, which uh, uh, thanks to the you know new compute power and the availability of large data sets, has blossomed like anything. Right. So deep learning has been successful in in a variety of places. So. Um, overall, you know, to summarize, uh, you know, the idea is that uh, there are a whole bunch of use cases which require machine learning or which significantly benef benefit from machine learning. So machine learning has become popular now because of the advent of the in uh, internet huge data. Okay, so um, uh, I mean, a uh, lots of huge data is available on the internet now. Okay. A lot of compute power is also available. Earlier, you know, 10 years back, there were no GPUs or no reasonable GPUs on which you could learn from large amount of data, but they are available now. New optimized algorithms as well. Okay? And huge theories developed by the researchers, new algorithms are coming up which can actually do wonders, which can actually figure out lots of insights from your data. Okay? Industry support has also increased. People have started understanding the power of machine learning and therefore the industry funding, industry support into, this, in, into these fields have significantly increased. And that is why you know, machine learning is, is very popular right now. Uh, not just that there is a need, but actually it has become an integral part of many core processes. Okay. Yeah.